Welcome to Victory Terrain. In today's video, we will be building a miniature Viking longhouse. Let's start by constructing the base for our longhouse. Here I'm using 3x3 three three inch wooden tiles. This is just what I have on hand. You can use anything sturdy for your base. Next, we are going to build a wooden floor. Craft sticks would look really nice, but I'm actually going to make this out of foam. I'm using a Proxon hot wire cutter and a tool from Shifting Lands to cut thin planks of foam that will act as our wood. This wire brush will give us a nice wood texture. This is something you can find at any hardware store. Once I have all of my pieces textured, I'm going to go back to the hot wire cutter so that I can cut these down into smaller wooden planks. If you don't have access to a hot wire cutter, you can do this with an X-Acto blade, or as I mentioned earlier, you can make the floor out of craft sticks. That would give you a more realistic wooden floor look, but I have a lot of foam, so I'm going to use this instead. Now I'm missing a clip here, but I just glued down these planks to our base with Mod Podge, and then I cut off the excess that is hanging off the sides. Next, we're gonna build up two side walls, and I'm using this thin piece of wood to do that. The width of the longhouse is six inches, and the length is 15. Now I want a lot of space in this longhouse, so the side walls are going to be about four inches high. Now, originally, I started off by measuring out a triangle for the walls, but I wanted as much playable space on the inside of this longhouse as possible. So instead of a classic triangular look, as a longhouse typically has, I decided to make the sides more curved. Next, I'm building the front door out of craft sticks. I typically make my doors an inch and a half in height and the width is about an inch. So I'm building a double door here on the front. That is four craft sticks per door. Next, I cut out a thin piece of wood that I'm going to use as a brace on top of the wood door. At the same time, I'm building a mirror door on the other side of the wall. Lately, I've been really enjoying wood glue for my miniature builds, but there's all sorts of glues that will work. Mod Podge, Tacky Glue, whatever you have handy. Black glue is really fast, but it can get quite messy. I added some more stylistic pieces here out of the craft sticks, and I did the same look on the back wall as well. And I felt like the back wall needed a little something, so I gave it a window. Next, I'm adding wood paneling to both the interior and exterior walls using the same foam wooden planks that I used on the inside floor. The variation in wood between the popsicle sticks and the foam will look quite nice once this is all painted. With the wood paneling, I started by applying it horizontally, and then halfway through I switched to vertical, and I did the same pattern on all of the walls. And now our Viking longhouse is starting to come together. Here's how it looks with all four of the walls completed. Next, we will be moving on to my favorite part of the build. I am carving out little stones on a long piece of foam, and this will be the sides of our longhouse. So I start by etching out the shapes of the stone with a pencil. You can also do this with a pen, just making little stone shapes with no specific patterns. And after etching out the stones, I take a sculpting tool to help rip out the foam in between all the little stones I made. This will later be covered with fake grout. I also give the stones a bit of texture with a rolled up piece of aluminum foil. This is a great cheap way 
to get a realistic stone look. And if you don't have aluminum foil, you can use rocks that you find outside to roll over the foam. Now this was a very tedious process, but I think it gives such a nice realistic stone look. Next, I mixed together Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. This is going to act as both a sealer and a base for our stone walls. We apply this first and then let it dry. Now you could use gray for a nice simple stone look, but what I like to do is start with burnt umber and sloppily apply that on top of our base. All the paintbrushes that I use typically come from the dollar store or Walmart. You don't need anything fancy when you're building terrain. After the layer of brown, we're going in with orange, and we're doing the same thing, kind of sloppily applying it all over, followed by yellow. And after that is all dried, we are using this warm white as a dry brush. So I remove as much paint as I can off the paintbrush, and I lightly apply it onto the stone. At this point, everything is quite dark, but the dry brushing will help highlight and lighten the piece. Also, for my paints, I do get all these acrylics from either the dollar store or Walmart. Next, we are applying a very dark brown wash. This is a recipe that I use from Black Magic Craft. It is one part matte medium to one part water, a couple drops of Flow Aid, and some brown and black acrylic inks. We use acrylic inks because they are less pigmented than the regular acrylic craft paint. So I apply this heavily all over and then let it dry. Now this is a perfectly good standalone stone wall for a tabletop game, but in the next step we are going to use spackling mixed with paint to fill in the gaps between the stones. And no, the spackling is not pink, it does dry white, and I do want to add in some brown and black paint because I want this grout to look quite dirty because it's going to be on the outside of our longhouse. Now here I probably added more paint than necessary. I would definitely add less than I did, but it still turned out all right in the end. For the application of the fake grout, I used an old gift card to scrape the grout across the stone wall, trying to fill in all of the gaps. Now this does end up covering your beautiful stonework quite a bit, so after I have applied the grout, I take a barely damp piece of paper towel and I carefully wipe off the extra grout that is on the stone. Now I do recommend, before you even get to this part, that you apply matte Mod Podge over top of the stones, because at this point, it's possible that you could rub off your beautiful paintwork, so be careful. So after the stone wall, I decided it was time to paint our beautiful wood, starting with a very dark brown base. And I must note that I did base this whole piece with Mod Podge before I did this step. That will protect our foam before we start the painting process. Now I did lose a couple clips of me painting the wood, so I did start with a base of burnt umber, followed by a dry brush of raw sienna. You can kind of see it on the paper towel in the background. It was sort of a yellowish brown, and I followed that up with a off-white dry brush that you can see here. And I'm using a big fluffy makeup brush that I found at the dollar store. It's been really great for dry brushing big pieces. I followed that up with the same wash that I used on the stone earlier, trying to get into all the cracks, covering up all of the pink foam that I missed with paint. Finally, we are going to move on to the roof. I'm using the side walls to measure out the curvature of the roof. This piece of foam is going to turn into brackets that I'll glue to the stone walls, and then we will be building a thatched roof over top. So with these brackets, I wanted to leave as much playable space as I could, so I cut out as much excess foam as I could. And 
I did this three times for three brackets. Once I found a placing that I liked, I used hot glue to attach these to our stone wall. The reason why I've built the roof this way is so that we can lift it off and have a playable interior. Now I needed to add some strips of foam across the brackets because this is where we will attach our thatched roof to. I first started off with the foam, but it is quite flimsy on its own, so I did end up gluing popsicle sticks on top of those after. And I base painted it brown, even though we will be covering this, just in case you can see it through the thatched roof. And before we get to that, I'm using craft sticks to make a little chimney. I glued groups of four craft sticks together with wood glue, then I cut them so that the height would be an inch and a half. And of course, I'm attaching the four pieces with wood glue, by far one of the most superior glues. And I'll attach this to the roof and paint it later. And now it's finally time for the thatched roof. For this, we are using paintbrushes that I found at the dollar store. For this ginormous longhouse, I ended up going through four of those paintbrushes. Now for this next step, if you're able to open up your paintbrush, you don't have to do this. I just don't have the tools necessary, so I'm using scissors to cut the bristles and I'm laying them down on a piece of tape. If you're able to break into the paintbrush, all the bristles are already glued together and it'll make your life easier. But like I said, I don't have the tools necessary, so I'm taking this extra step. So once I have a nice strip of bristles, I'm using wood glue so that they can stick together. Now if you've noticed, the bristles on the paintbrush are straight, but a nice little hack, I'm using a heat gun to melt the polyester bristles. They kind of curl up under the heat and melt, and it gives us a more realistic thatch roof look. I also didn't really like the color of the bristles, so I went over with a bit of raw sienna and burnt umber. I applied these quite wet, and I blotted the excess off with a piece of paper towel. Now it is time to add our pieces to the wood, and this time I'm using hot glue. I did cut these into smaller pieces instead of applying them in one long strip. And I also gave each piece a nice straight cut on the edge where all the bristles were glued together. Now for the top of the roof, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I ended up going for this peaked look. And I did later on add a bamboo skewer attached to the chimney for more stability for this section. And here's how our roof is looking. This is before I gave it a haircut. Now our longhouse is almost done. I first wanted to add a couple finishing touches, including a citadel skull, and I went back and added some highlights to the doors because all the wood was kind of blending together and I wanted it to stand out a bit better. For the highlighting on the doors, I used a light beige color. The roof was looking unfinished, so I had to add some more wood beams to really pull the piece together. Now I painted these brown before I glued them on because I didn't want to accidentally get paint on my nice new thatched roof. These wood beams were also necessary for hiding where the paint bristles were connected at the top. But now the outside of our longhouse is complete. Really this is sort of two builds in one because I think that this roof would be really good to double as a stable. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos.